Gospel of December the 22nd, 2015, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months, and then returned to her home. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have this beautiful canticle of Mary, of the Virgin Mary. That is the response of the proclamation of her cousin Elizabeth, who filled by the Holy Spirit that the Virgin had just brought to her, starts saying, How does it happen to me that the mother of my Lord shall come to visit me, shall come to me? Then is when I believe that the Virgin Mary is suddenly enraptured in the joy of the Holy Spirit and starts prophesying, proclaiming and explaining and teaching. Suddenly she realized that she was not only sent to her cousins for helping her in the material sense, but above everything to bring her the Christ the Son of God who already was in her womb, her blessed womb, and also the Holy Spirit in Mary, the Virgin Mary. We have the accomplishment already of what the Lord said according to the Gospel of John. If someone loves me, my Father, he will keep my, if someone loves me, he will keep my commandments. And my Father will love him and we will come to him and, and dwell in him. Of all the people in the earth, the one that could love with all her heart the baby boy was of course his mother Mary. And she loved him dearly. And she was filled with the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And that she brought to Elizabeth and to everyone that receives her as the mother. She brings us the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in a very, very special way. What is our Virgin Mother telling us? Unfortunately, there is great trouble translating the Greek, which is the closest language that we have the Gospel written. Fortunately, we do not have a gospel written in Aramaic or Hebrew, but only in Greek. There seems to be, there are reports that there are some in Aramaic, the Peshita, which I haven't been able to read just yet. I have to learn Aramaic first. I know how to read Hebrew and Greek, but I content myself with Greek for now. On the other hand, there are at least eight to ten very old codex in Greek. Let me translate a little bit from the Greek. The Virgin says, Megali nei which is translated, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. That is not exactly what the Greek is saying. The Greek literally is saying, could be understood, My soul magnifies the Lord, the greatness. My soul magnifies the Lord. But one would immediately, would immediately have to ask, how can a human soul magnify what is already infinite? And then I turn it around. For the last few days I have been dwelling on this. And I believe that it, that it fits very well with what is said in the psalm. My lips will praise you. Won't you widen my heart? Is it not true that the Lord would rather make greater 
the soul of the virgin because he God himself is dwelling in there. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. And my soul, my my soul is rejoicing. My spirit is overwhelmed with hope, with joy because of my Savior. And then he goes on to say, she goes on to say some words that are beautiful because she forecasts, she forecasted what the Lord was going to say. Because the because God saw the smallness, the nothingness of his servant. God Himself, Christ, will repeat in the gospel, Come to me, all of you who are tired because of the load, and learn from me. And I am meek and humble. Humble is the traduction, the translation of the word tapenusin, which means in Greek we read tapenusin cardia. Literally, because I am small in my heart. Theologians are overwhelmed and perplexed at those words. And they translate them into humbleness. Yes, humbleness. But in the highest way, in the absolute extreme. For God is the humblest of all, their all. Even the Virgin is learning from Him. He goes on to say, Who is he? The mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He's talking about God. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. Now she's talking about fear. Unfortunately, there are many that would like to imbue dread, fear, from God because he would he might punish us but he's our father he has he knows each and every one of our sins of our guilt and if we are if we ask him if we truly ask him he is ready to console us to cleanse us to make us whole again to give us the peace that we are looking and the love that he has for us so we should not have a fear of someone who could potentially harm us, but rather the fear of someone whom we love so much and we fear for ourselves to again insult, to again harm him in any way. Not that we could actually harm God, but we do harm his love for us when we do not act like the true, like the true children that we're called to be. He scattered the proud. He cast down the mighty. Poor of us, if there ever comes a time when we believe that we have a great dignity, whatever we are. Rather, let us be humble. Let us be humble always. He has lifted up the, the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. Today, dear brothers, as we walk very close to the nativity, to the Christmas time, it is good for us to contemplate the heart of the Virgin and to ask our Father in heaven that in His mercy He might configure also our hearts the same way as our Mother, to be ready to receive the precious gift of Jesus Christ, the Incarnated Son. Until we meet in heaven, God bless you all, brothers.